Chit Fathoms here for a lengthy video involving some serious modding and unique looks. A few weeks ago, I was blown away by some photos posted by one Victor Danel using a modified Helios 44. His process was to polish the glass elements using a strong abrasive and then sand some of the areas inside the barrel to increase how the light bounces around. The resulting effect is a light and wonderful glow to the brighter areas of the frame. It's an effect that I was trying to recreate in post since forever, and having the chance to do it in camera was just too much to resist. Then I pushed the concept a bit further, I painted some stuff inside of the lens, added an oval aperture, and even threw a flare filter inside. So here's what you're gonna need for this process. A lens wrench, a Helios 44 tube, metal polish, I used autosol following Daniel's instructions. A piece of cloth, some sandpaper. I used a hundred because I did the whole thing by hand. Masking tape, a can of metal paint, transparent tape, Sharpie markers and thin fishing line. I highly recommend that you take photos along the process just so you know what goes where and how to put the lens back together. There are plenty of videos around on how to disassemble the Helios and clean it up. This is not one of them. I didn't fully disassemble the lens, I just took out the very minimum I could. Starting by the back, unscrew the rear group. Now the front. The inside of the barrel has a slot for the lens wrench, so twist it out. The front is much easier than the back. Once the ring is removed, the element pops right out. Place it on the desk. Give the lens a gentle shake and the second element will also fall in your hand with a spacer. Onto the back group, unscrew the glass out. If you're having trouble with grip, use rubber gloves. Now get the piece of cloth, add some metal polish to it and uncoat it all away. This process creates countless micro scratches on the glass which are the main cause for the glow since light bounces through them. To completely remove the polish, I washed everything in water and let it dry some more on its own. In the meantime, I went outside with the rear now empty tubing and the front spacer, wear mask and protective goggles. Using rough sandpaper, a hundred, take out the black paint inside these two pieces. It doesn't have to be perfect. With a masking tape, cut small pieces enough to cover all the threads and just leave the sanded metal exposed. Be very thorough and add many layers in the process because the paint will mess up the threads if it gets in there. Now spray it with your favorite color. Here I'm making a purple one. Make sure you get a decent amount of paint in there. When it dries off, you can remove all the masking tape. The glass should be dry by now, so it's time to start putting it back together. The painted elements will reflect on the light that bounces inside of the lens adding a bit of a color tinge to the flares and glow. Starting with the front, put back the inner glass element, then the painted spacer, front element and screw it tightly back. Reassemble the back in the same way, but don't fit it in yet. Time to do the oval iris. I had the acrylic discs from the previous tutorial, so I just grabbed one of those. You can choose your aperture value, I'm going with f2.8 here. Send it down as thin as you can and be careful not to break it. With a sharpie, paint the disc. I'm going for a crazy look, so I'm gonna use the same color I used for the inside of the lens, purple. This is very intense. If you just want the oval shapes, paint it all black. The tinted aperture has a very strong effect whenever you have a direct light source in the frame or light rays going straight inside the lens. The last step is to attach the fishing line as a flare filter. Put it across the middle and using thin transparent tape, lock it into place. Cut the edges. To make an unquestionably purple lens, I'm gonna paint the flare filter as well. Careful, because neither the wire nor the aperture will ever fully dry. Putting the oval with the right orientation can be challenging. I notice the gap, the small hole in the EF adapter is always perpendicular to the top of the lens, so I use that as a guide. The easiest way to rotate it in place is using the lens wrench. Still takes a few attempts, and sometimes 
Screwing the back element rotates the iris, so take that into account. Screw the back in as tight as you can and be careful not to break the acrylic disc. You'll feel some resistance. That's it, you're done! Now is the perfect time to subscribe to the channel and then check the blog for plenty of other tutorials and reviews. The Helen's out.